Do I? Yeah, there you go. So um, I'm Ron Cronin. I'm with the Mike Ferry organization, as you guys probably know, or some do, some don't. I've been working with Mike for like 18 years now. And um, and I also work for Century 21 Full Realty Services down in Oceanside. Woo, woo, the new Oceanside office here in San Diego County. So if I'm, I'm speaking to you today from an agent and a coach and uh, someone who spends a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time trying to get good at what we're going to practice and work on today, which is handling objections. Handling objections is what Neil asked me to work with you guys on. Who would like to be a little bit better at this act, this skill of handling objections? Okay, I'm assuming everybody's hands up, right? I can't see everyone, but I think so. And I would think that you would raise your hand to that. Um, ready for some good news? Doesn't have to be complicated. Doesn't have to be sophisticated. In fact, I'd want you to write at the top of your page to keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay. And I want you guys to remember that we're, we're as real estate agents, I think it's important that our mindset about objections is important. But remember, as real estate agents, guys and gals, this is a direct sales job. It's a direct sales job. And you want, want to know why many agents fail in this business is because they act like it's a retail job. They act like it's retail where people come to you and people walk in and people call you and people, you know, reach out to you. But if you're going to try to make a living off of that, it's probably going to be a slim one if you can pull it off at all. Okay. So it's a direct sales job. And the faster you can accept that, the faster you can start improving your skills and be good at handling objections. Okay. Direct sales job. It's just like, uh, have you guys come in contact with people who sell solar? Have you come in contact with the solar people? How about Sirius XM? Do you ever get calls from Sirius XM or satellite radio? How about your car warranties almost expired? You need a new car warranty. How about car insurance or some kind of insurance, right? These are direct salespeople and they use the phone and they, as many other ways, but they use the phone as an avenue to get business. You guys all gotten calls from these groups of people? Okay. Do you know why we all get calls from these groups of people? Do you know why we get calls? Anyone? Raise your hand and unmute. It works. Yep. Yeah. It works. <laughs> yes, it works. Does they, it work? They are also in the talk to people business. Does it work on everybody? No. No, because not everybody's in need of our service. Okay. In fact, most people we talk to are not in need of our service. So I'm just trying to set the stage here, right? Because objection handling should be a very simple task. It doesn't have to be a big deal. But I think the bigger deal is the mindset that we have about this whole scenario and about the rejection that we receive. Okay. So I'm hoping to change your mindset. Now, let me ask you, you know, I got, I've been in business since in real estate since 1995. And this year, was for me was the first year that I've, maybe last year a little bit, it's the first time I've experienced being prospected by escrow companies, by title companies, home warranty companies are prospecting me. Are they calling you guys as well? Right, you take a new listing, they're like, hey, congratulations from ABC escrow. What can we do for you to help you with your listing and we want your business, right? Do you know they didn't used to do this? No, they'd walk around and give us coffee cups or, you know, notepads with stuff on it like that for us to use. And But now they're prospecting. Home inspectors are prospecting. Contractors, painters are, con are con calling me prospecting. So I just want you to understand the activity works and that you're in the, if you are a prospector, which I'm assuming everyone on this call is, you are doing the right activity, even though sometimes you question it. Sometimes you question it, don't you? Okay. So what is an object? What is an objection? What is it? Let's write it down. Let's write down. It's a question in the mind of the customer that remains unanswered. Hmm. It's a question. Mike Ferry says question. So when I got into this business and into this system, I was like, a question, I don't get it. Why, why, if they have a question for me, why don't they just come out and ask me the question? Oh, let's see. There's where it comes down to. Why don't the customers, instead of asking their question, why do they object? Anybody have an idea? Reflex. Okay. I'd say it could, it could just be a reflex anytime that that happens. Anybody else? 
Why do they object instead of asking me the question that they're trying to get the answer to? They're afraid they're to trying ask. Trying to push you off. Okay, push you off. And then, ma'am, say that again, miss. They're afraid to ask. Tell me why you're onto something. Uh, Ron, I think they hold on, hold on, hold on. They're hold on. afraid of what the answer may be. Okay, good. Go ahead, sir. Ron, I think they want to be in the safe zone because they want to be in the comfort zone. So okay. they are objecting you. Yeah, okay, exactly. And you're you're right there. They they don't want me to see any motivation. They don't want me to see it. If they ask me the question, now they're vulnerable to me, the salesperson. You know, and so instead of saying, hey, Ron, um, you know, would you work with us on the commission a little bit? Instead of just coming out and asking me, which means now I know they want to sell and are thinking about hiring me, they don't want me to know yet. So they say, listen, I'm not paying 6%. And then they wait and see how you're going to respond. But it, what they're trying to do is ask a question. So if somebody says, I'm not paying 6%, just give me an example. What are some of the questions they might be trying to ask me? You have to unmute. Cut your commission. Will you, will you cut your commission? Good. What else may they be asking me? Would you do Why it? Are you worth more? Would you do it for less? Commission? Would you do it for less? Are you are you worth more than everybody else? Right. I mean, that wouldn't that be great if the customer asked us that question? Hey, Ron, are you better than everyone else in town? That'd be super if they asked. They don't ask. The way they ask it is they go, "I'm not paying full commission," and then you have to prove to them that you're worth it. Okay, so I just want you to understand they're trying to communicate with you, but they're afraid they don't want to show you their cards. You guys been to Vegas, right? You got to keep your cards close so that nobody sees what you got. And you don't want to like stick them out because then you're going to lose. They don't want you to see their cards. Okay, so an objection is a question that they're trying to get an answer from for you. I want you to look at it that way for now. And then, but that's different from a condition. What is a condition? It's a statement of fact we can do nothing about. It's not something I can have a handler for. It's not something I can overcome. Who's got an example of a condition that a seller may have that would prevent them from moving forward today? I retire in two years. Okay, so my move is based on my retirement. That happens in 24 months, exactly. They can't move until the schools are out or their kid graduates from school. Right, Melinda, they're not going to move their kid at the end of the school year. Good example. Any other ideas? Um, they owe more than what the house is worth. We're upside down. They don't have any money or any reserves or any means. That could be a condition. You'd have to sniff around to find more money, but it could be a condition. Exactly. Good. Right. So something like that. My husband just had a open heart surgery. He can't be disrupted for three weeks. I'm not going to get around that three weeks. Well, blah, blah, blah. Like, what are you going to say? It's a condition. Okay. So you just have to move on or move forward or plan for that. Are you guys with me with the difference? Yep. Okay. If you're trying to handle a condition, it's a, it's a bust. Okay. It's a bust. So with objections, um, we have at Mike Ferry, I mean, you guys have probably seen, you know, uh, Lita, I know you've seen the 40 objections handled. We have all kinds of material on that. Mike's been putting that out for a few decades, okay? I've found, Mike has also taught us a few rules. So let's go over the rules about objection handling, okay? Right, so write down, always agree, never argue. Now, when I say argue, I want you to understand what I mean. I mean, do not correct them. Do not disagree. Do not disapprove. Do not sound like you disapprove. You know, do you have to agree and be on their side? Can you do that for the sake of making a lot of money? You know, when he says, when he, even if they say something ridiculous, when he says, you know, I'm going to wait three months until the prices come back up. And you're like, well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. It's like, it's going to take way more than three months. You know, that's a ridiculous plan, but I'm not going to say that. I'm going to go, you're going to wait three months. I can understand your strategy. You're going to take it off the market. I get where you're coming from. Oh, you're going to sell it yourself. I'm sure you can get it done. Now I have more to say after that, but it's the agreement. The agreement people is my best tool as a salesman. I am on your side. Come here, buddy. You're going to take it off the market for a while. Good for you. Good for you. You deserve a break. I am on your side. 
Now, I'm not going to let you do that, but I appear that I agree and I approve of whatever you said. You guys understand? Now, some of you can't do it. You're like, your ego won't allow you to agree with them or just get on their team or be their cheerleader for a second, but it's your best tool. So he says, always agree, never argue, contradict, you know, and you guys do that a lot. You know, I'll say to you, you know, I'm going to take my house off the market for six weeks and just kind of fix it up a little bit. And you don't like that. And I can tell you don't like it because you're like, oh, you're going to take it off the market for six weeks. And instantly I know that you disapprove which means I have to protect myself against you. Do you understand? Okay. So say, I want you guys to say good for you. I'm going to tell you a few things. Not yet. I want you to say good for you. Okay. Hey, I'm going to try the sale on my own. Good for, good for you. you. Yeah. I'm going to take it off you. the market for a few months. Good, good for, you. for you. Good for you. You know what? I think I'm going to use my daughter. She just got her license. Good, good for, for you. You. Yeah, for you. You know what? I was thinking it might be a good idea to raise the price that we have. Good for you. For you. <laughs> raise the price. You know, I, I get where you're, you know, I'm going to be in agreement. I get where you're coming from. Okay? So we're always going to agree. Mike says, when you handle objections, ask a lot of questions, ask a lot of questions. And then he says, make, and he goes, remember, it's your job to close, to close. Robert, someone asked me, they sent me their recordings, this gal. She sent me like three recordings of her prospecting on the phone. She goes, well, you listen to them. I can't seem to get any appointments. I can't figure out why. Listen to my calls. So I did. And I called her back. She goes, well, why am I not setting appointments? I say, you never ask. What do you mean? I listened to your calls. Not one time did you ever ask for the appointment. Makes like, it harder. Well, the guy, he was, he wouldn't let me and he said he wasn't going to do anything. And he had these other plans. I'm like, I know, but the problem is the salesperson couldn't line up a close. Okay. So at the end of objection handling, once you handle it, Melinda knows this, once you handle it, you have to say it close. close. So here's close. what I want you, here's what I want you guys to do. We're going to practice to agree, ask a couple questions and close. Say it. Agree. 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 Ask a couple ask questions. Ask a couple questions. And close. close. And close. Okay. Now, how many times do we have to close most people before they say yes? Seven oh, times. Seven. Five. Good for five you. Times. Five, it's five times minimum. Five times minimum. I don't know why, guys. But here, write it down. Okay. This is from a study. Write this down. Write down the first you know, one ST first, and then put 3%. And then put second, 5%. Third close, 8% of the people said yes. Fourth close, 13% said yes. And check it out on the fifth close, which is not easy to get to <laughs> the fifth close, 81% said yes. Wow. After being asked five times. I'm an amiable. When you ask me to do something big or expensive or whatever, it's big decision. It takes me time because I got to think about everybody else first. It takes me time. But if you ask me a couple of times in the same conversation, Ron, you want to drive this truck home today? I'll be like, Oh wow. Today. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me toss that around a little bit. And he'll be like, well, you know, how are you going to use it? What color is your favorite? And I'll be like, well, I'm going to use it to go to the desert. And I black's my favorite color. And he'll go, well, we got a black one right here. You want to buy it? And I'll go, oh man, well, you know what? Let me talk to my wife, you know, and then I, but if you ask me another time or two, I'm going to buy the damn truck. I just need to be kind of eased into it. Right. You with me, Josie? Yeah. Right. Got to bring me into it. And I need you to ask me a few times. Don't don't wimp out and only ask me once and then go back into the showroom, baby. I've got my checkbook in my pocket. Can't you see it? <laughs> need you to help me through there. So do the sellers. OK. All right. So agree. Ask a couple of questions and close. So now I'm sitting here for this call. I swear to God, last night with this. And I'm like, OK, I have to do this call for these guys. Objection handling. I'm like, well, what objections are we hearing? Because I have to have this big call prepared, 45 minute call. I got to have all these objections. Uh, here's what I came up with. This is what I'm hearing. 
If it's, if I have someone with motivation to sell and they won't, and they're giving me resistance, this is what they say. I have a friend in the business or somebody, we know someone, my family member, my friend, my sister, we have our agent. It's the same objection, friend in the business. It's not 10 objections, Lita. It's the same. Okay. And just look at it that it's just one, they're, they're saying, I have a friend in the business. By the way, what's the question they're asking when I have a friend in the business? I, appre- I, I can appreciate that you have friends in the business. No, 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 Lita. No, no, no. What is the question that the customer is asking me when they tell me they have a friend in the business? What are they trying to ask me? Are you better than they are? What do you do that's different? Close me. What, why should, we hire why should you? I trust you? Will you do it for less? Are you oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> are you better? Would you do it for less? All of those answers are true. That's how they communicate in this weird cryptic objection language. But that's what they're trying to ask you, right? So if I had some questions, think about this. What if I had general questions prepared mm-hmm. that I could use for anybody, anytime, in any objection? Do you understand? What if I had those prepared and I, and I wanted to agree, ask two questions, and close? Agree, ask two, and close. Agree, ask two, and close. And as many times as I can do it, I close, 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 five times close. Okay. So, you know, uh, so I have wrote down a a friend in the business. I wrote down, we're going to wait for blank. We're going to wait for blank. You got that Tyrone wait for blank. Hey, we're going to wait for the presidential election. We're going to wait for summer, wait for the kids to get out of school, wait for the operation, wait for the baby, wait for my husband to die. We're going to wait for something, (laughs) wait for taxes, whatever. People are always going to wait for blank. Look at it. And I don't want, the problem is you've been handling blank. Ah. What I'm teaching you to do, Lita, is to handle waiting, not handle what they're waiting for. I don't have any power in that, but I can handle that they're waiting. So uh, the third one I could come up with was, you know, we're not selling any longer. We're, we're going to take it off or we changed our plans or we're giving up or whatever. But I couldn't come up with any really more any more objections. Are you guys hearing anything outside of these three? Seriously, what else are you hearing? Wait for the market to crash. That's number two. Right? Outside of these, can you think of anything they're saying outside of this? We didn't get our price. So they're going to wait, wait for prices to come up is what that really is, right? Yeah, or we're no. or or we're not selling any longer because we didn't get our price. So Melinda, I was like, shit, we spend all this time worrying about this, but we only hear like three to five things maximum mm-hmm. every day. That's it. Okay. So Robert's recording this. I'm going to read through some of these questions I jotted down to give you an idea what type of questions. You don't need to get these. He'll get them to you later. Okay. But watch. <clears throat> So if someone said, um, you know, let's just say someone said, um, well, we've changed our mind. We're not selling any longer. I can say, well, I can understand where you're coming from and I support you. Hey, if I was able to get your home sold in the next 21 days, would that pose a problem for anybody? Well, no. Okay, great. Are you looking for results versus excuses this time? That sounds good. Well, all we need to do now is simply set a quick appointment Would four o'clock or five be better. You muted yourself. So, sorry. When did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> After four or five o'clock, be better. Okay. So you would, <laughs> right. So I agree. I ask a couple simple answers that I already know the answers to. Like I don't ask questions that I don't already know the answer. Did you guys watch the Johnny Depp attorney or it's Johnny Depp trial? Come on. You guys need to watch it for the simple questions that the attorneys were asking. Oh my God, that Camille girl, Johnny Depp's attorney. Oh my God. The question she asked to manipulate and to make that case was unbelievable. You guys need to watch that. Okay. The drama is pretty funny too, but the questions are incredible. So, you know, if I sold your home in 30 days, would that pose a problem? I mean, what's the guy going to say? Oh, 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 no, that sounds good. You know, if I, would you like results versus excuses? Oh yeah. Um, Hey, would you like an aggressive agent to protect that equity? 
Is it important to get to St. Louis on time? How much equity is tied up in the property? Do you want to leave money on the table or you want to take every penny with you? Are you open to multiple offers? Would you like this to be an easy and effortless process for your family? Okay, you guys see where I'm going with these questions, how, what they're like? Uh, they, you, are, you can see how they're going to answer. And, and everybody wants this stuff that I'm asking. So who's got an objection, common objection, say when we're prospecting and I'm trying to get an appointment? Who's got an objection? With rates being what they are, it's kind of hard for me to, to yeah, you know, the, the price or the, the payment that I'm going to be having is going to be a lot different now. I can understand. So are you excited? And would you have in your plan that once you bought this house, you would just reduce when rates went lower? You would refi? If they did, if they did re reduce. Should we go ahead and meet today at four o'clock or five to discuss the, all the numbers for you? Sounds good. See you at five. Objections? Where am I going to move to if I sell my house? That's not really an objection. This is a non-motivated seller. And I heard that a lot in the last year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not someone that I can help. If you mean, if, see, did you guys understand the difference between that? That's not really an objection. That's just someone without any motivation. Mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Ronnie, Ron, if you are coming. Go ahead. Ron, if you are coming to ask for a price reduction, we don't want to meet with you. So did I just send you the price reduction form to your email? Well, still again, the price reduction. I want my same price, right? You know, uh, so, so you're not so, so you're not wanting to reduce. And I can understand it's a lot of money that we're talking about here. Are you are you okay if the house never sells and you end up staying here for a few years longer? Well, I have to sell the house, but I, I need my price also. Which is more important, selling the house or getting the highest price? Which is more important? Uh, selling the house, yeah. Should I come over today and talk about a number that we can try out and that you'd be happy with? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, okay <laughs> see you later. <laughs> yeah. What else? Objections? Uh, I got one. Uh, yes. Go ahead, Miguel. Uh, I decided to take it off the market because the market is shifting and prices are coming down. Totally. You're correct with that. Is this plan A or is this plan B? Well, I want to get the most money possible from the sale of this home. If you were very clear that you would get the most money in the month of September and October, then you'll get in five years. If you knew this, would you want to take immediate action? Of course. Should we meet today at four o'clock or five? Yeah, today. Yeah. That's it. Oh, no, Ron, Ron, I have a, I already have a friend in the business, so I'm just going to use them. You know what? I can understand. It's nice to have people you can trust, Robert. I can appreciate that. Hey, can I ask how much equity do you and your wife have tied up in that house? About 200,000. Uh, is she the type of gal that likes to leave money on the table? No, she is not. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. Hey, let's do this with a, with 300,000 on the line, your wife wants every penny possible. Obviously you guys want a second opinion. I can do mine today at four o'clock or five, which is better for you. Uh, I guess four o'clock is fine. I'm going to use the same realtor. You're going to use the same realtor, ma'am? You know, I can understand that. It's nice to have people you can trust. Is that plan A or plan B? Probably plan A. <laughs> okay, good. Hey, can I ask you, why did plan A not work for you the first time, do you think? I honestly don't know why it didn't, you know, why it didn't work. Ma'am, if I was able to put your home under contract in escrow, say in the next 21 days, would that create an issue or a problem for anyone in the house? No, it would not. No. Are you folks prepared to move, say, before Thanksgiving? That would be great. Would I be able to swing by today at four o'clock or five? Let's do five. Ray, you got anything for me, Ray? Yes, we're not going to sell anymore because we rented the property out already. You've rented the property out. If someone was to write an offer on the house, are you open to looking at those, Mr. Zamora? With the tenant, we like the tenant and we're getting a good price. Are you open to selling the house with the tenant in place so they can write out their lease? For how much? Well, I'm not sure. That's what we'd want to discuss. Could I come by today at four o'clock or five? Right. Anybody? Come so on. Ron, there's one in the chat box that we're going to go with the neighborhood expert. 
going to go with the neighborhood expert and I would do the second opinion with them as well. I'd say, hey, I can understand. It's nice to go with the neighborhood expert. Hey, let me ask you a question, Robert. Do you think the buyer for your home is going to come from within the neighborhood or from outside? Probably from outside. Are you excited to find out what an agent from outside the area and um, of all the exposure that I can bring to the house? Would you like yeah. to see my plan to compare? Yeah, one? yeah. Okay, sure. I'll show you mine. Now watch. Anytime. Now watch, guys. I'm going to teach you that second opinion. It's so damn easy. Write down how much equity is in the house. And you guys aren't allowed to bring this down to San Diego County, okay? You can only use it up there where you guys are, okay? Otherwise, I'm not going to teach you this stuff anymore. All right, so <laughs> how much equity is in the house? And then something referencing, you know, do you want to make sure you take every take it all with you? Something, you know, you want to take it all with you, okay? Those are the two questions we're going to use. So, so Robert, um, go ahead and give it to me. Give me the objection. You know, we're going to go ahead and use the neighborhood expert. I'm going to agree. Well, I can understand where you're coming from. It's nice to have people that are familiar, right? Guys and gals, I'm agreeing. I think he's dumb, but I'm agreeing. And then I'm going to ask, hey, I'm curious, how much equity do you and your wife have tied up in that place, Robert? About 300,000. Woo, 300,000 bucks. That's a lot of dough. And is she the type of gal that likes to leave money on the table? No, she is not. No. Um, with 300, no, watch how I do this. Here's how I set up the close. With 300,000 on the line, or with $500,000 of equity, or whatever the number is, with $300,000 on the line, and your wife wants every penny possible, obviously, you want a second opinion. That's the words, not, don't you deserve a second opinion? We're not asking that. Obviously, you want a second opinion, four o'clock or five, and just close. Okay? So what we're doing is just saying, no, I know watch, I can even spread some butter on that, make it smoother. You know, I can say, Robert, listen, it looks like you're probably going to end up going with your friend, which I can appreciate with $300,000 on the line. Obviously you want a second opinion minus 15 minutes or less. We'll cover three things when I'm there, the price I can sell it for what the costs are so you can compare. And then I'll show you the timeline I'll need from start to finish to complete the work. I can do it in 15 minutes. I'll leave everything there so that you can, you know, examine that over the next couple of days. Would four o'clock or five be better? Five. Questions, comments, concerns from you folks. Hey, Ron, it's Andy Watkins. Andy. How do you stay agnostic and not get emotionally tied up into the um, responses and the, and uh, their, um, the direction they want to take it? Okay, so somebody has to help me with what does agnostic mean? I don't know. Like neutral, means. not involved, not emotional, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm a, a, a Golden West practice? College, Golden West College, Huntington Beach, two years, people, yes. Okay, so say again. How do you stay unemotional and uninvolved in kind of their... It's a... It's a... Uh, it's, it's a practice. It's a, it's a practice, but it's a suit I wear. I am simply a consultant. It's not my decision. I'm not pulling you. I'm not pushing you into anything. I'm simply sitting here as your consultant. And I have the answers when you have questions. I have the data. So I just, I, I got to understand if you get emotional and sometimes you do, sometimes people are mean or, or they're super, like their beliefs are so strong and you know they're wrong and you want to do something about it. But that's your ego that wants to, flare up that wants to say something or, you know, confront them or that kind of thing. So how do I remain that way? I think it's my job, right? I mean, believe me, I worked five years at the Ritz Carlton when I was like 20, 19 years old. And did, did they allow us to argue with the guests? Andy, the customer, no, I don't think so. It wouldn't last too the, long. The customer <laughs> is always right. Take that to the next level. The customer is always right. Whatever they say, they're right. We're gonna we're gonna try it on our own. You guys don't do a very good job as realtors. You don't. You're not worth the money that you charge. I'd be like, I can understand how you feel that way. <laughs> I got to work with these guys every day. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I that used to be true for me. Not anymore, but you know that kind of thing. But anyway, but just agreeing with whatever or how crazy or ridiculous it is. Hey, hey Andy. Hey Andy. You real estate agents, you're all a bunch of liars. I know. I trust me. I got to work with these guys every day now. How important is it you to get to San Diego, Ron? Boom! Yeah. Boom, Andy, good job. Someone else said, hey, Ron, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, well, we have to sell in 30 days because I got to rent it out otherwise. So you have to sell in 30 days. Otherwise, you got to rent it out. Can you tell me more about that? 
Well, we've been on the market three months with this other bozo. So we just, we got to have it sold. Is that due to the financial, the, the expense it's going to cost you having to pay the mortgage? Well, we're okay there, but we just need some income coming in at this point. Okay. So what, what, what's the true objection here? <clears throat> I don't really know what you're objecting to. It sounds like we're listing your house and I have a short window to sell. Right. Is that it's right? just, uh, you oh, want... you're only going to give me a 30 day listing. Right. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I see. Okay, good. Well, I'll tell you what, um, and uh, sorry, Ernie, listen, Ernie, I can appreciate where you're coming from. Six months is our company policy, but I'll tell you what, if for any reason during our time together on the listing, if you're unhappy with my service, you can cancel at any time hey, that's so within I... 30 days. Is that fair? That's fair. Great. Almost. Sign here, initial here. Six Perfect. months. Thank you. Don't you know my broker, Neil Schwartz, for God's sakes? <laughs> Ron. Go ahead. Ron, we're going to uh, our objection is on interest rates. You know what? I decided not to move forward because rates are too high right now. Uh, I'm sorry, Ray. You have to, you're have you a little bit muffled. Say that one more time. Um, the objection comes because of interest rates. Okay. The interest rates are, are too high, and it's just costing me a lot to buy my next house. Yeah, I can appreciate it. It's priced a lot of people out of the market, Ray. Hey, let me ask you a question. Would it would you be able to maybe purchase the house at the current rates that exist and then just plan to refi, say, in two years? Would that be a plan that you could operate from? If rates go down, yes, of course. Have you seen rates go down recently? Not recently. Okay, but you've seen rates go down. Yes, I have. So, so rates go up and down and your plan would just be, can you get by at the 5% rate we're at right now? Yeah. Okay, I might ask him, Ray, have you considered some of the other financing options that exist for you right now that you may not have explored? Right. You know, I know you want that 30-year fix, but have you considered some of the other financing options that are available and that'll tide you over till the rates change and improve? You know, that kind of thing. Or, or should we sit down and explore those other options? Got it. Yeah. Ultimately, okay. ultimately, it sounds, Ray, like you want to move. Am I correct, sir? I do. So it sounds like what when we get together, we just have to discuss what financing option is going to be something that's doable for you. See you tonight at four? Make it five. See you then. <laughs> okay. So when we get together, we should discuss. I love that. Like oh, sure. Hey, Ron, it's Tess. I have a question for you. Go ahead, Tess. So during the presentation, and because you pre-called them, and they said that they're going to have to interview the other agent. And during the listing presentation, remember I mentioned to you that I need to speak to the other agent first. Yes, Tess, I understand, and I respect that. Um, based on my presentation tonight, just based on what I've done, do you feel I can sell your home? Yeah, but I really want to hear what the other agent has to say. Absolutely. But you, you believe I have the ability to do it. Am I right? I think so. Okay, good. And you understand the pricing and the commission and the terms, you understand everything and that all makes sense for you? Sure, but I don't make rush decision. That's the Abs thing. Absolutely not. So listen, if everything makes sense, may I make a recommendation? Sure. Well, let's do this. As part of my service and to start our relationship, let's go ahead and sign the listing agreement now. And then I'll call, um, I'll call... Jack Ma and let him know that you already listed with me, uh, you know, and I'll, and I'll do that objection handler test. And I'll say, I'll call the agents that you have an appointment with and I'll cancel the appointment for you. Would you like me to tell you what I'm going to say? I'm going to let him know that you thought they were great and you wanted to give them a chance, but I convinced you to list your home with me. Let's go ahead and make a list of who you want me to call Tess. And I did that really fast because I'm ripping through like objection handler number 12 or something. I think it is in our workbook or, you know, one of those. But I would, I would just simply close and offer to get her out of it. Now, Tess, check this out. In Las Vegas in 2009, my first listing, this guy's name was Richard, and that's what he said. He says, well, I got another appointment with the original agent that I listed with, so let me hear what she has to say, and I will call you. And I was like, and I just whipped out this handler. And when I said, I'll call her and counsel for you, he goes, you will? Oh, that'd be great. You know, but we have to be able to, we have to offer it. Okay. And we have to be able to, it, it, we have to be able, willing to talk about what's hanging them up and we have to be willing to move, ask them to move forward anyway, or they're not going to, right. someone's going to sell someone right now. Either she's going to sell me on agent B, or I'm going to sell her on signing this paperwork right now. Hey, and by the way, when you guys walk out the door, does the likelihood of you getting chosen increase or decrease? Decrease to zero. When you leave, most of the time, that's it. You're waiting for the callback. 
just picture it this way. When you leave without it, it's like them saying, Hey, Ron, uh, don't call us. We'll call you, you know, yeah. and you're like, okay, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah. That's your chance. But anyway, okay. so the objection handling. So do you guys understand? Agree, ask a couple of questions, close. And then you can keep doing that and doing that based on how many questions you have in front of you or that you can recall from memory. Any objections I didn't handle? So, Ron, on, on that point, though, you, something you've talked about before that I, I think is is a really good thing is that if you are if you absolutely can't get the contract signed and you they are going to interview the other agent is setting up booby traps. Yeah, well, dro there's drop downs and there's booby traps you can set. I love that. Right? Yeah. Um, but like, think about this. If they won't sign what I'd ask her to do, ultimately, if she won't. I'll say, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and sign it. And then I'll take it with me and I'll call you tomorrow and you tell me yes or no. And then she goes, mm, I don't like that. I'll go, okay, sign it and I'll leave it here. And then that way I can just swing by tomorrow and grab it if it's yes. See, so I'll drop down to the next level, to the next level, you know, but then ultimately if she's not going to sign anything, I'm going to set some booby traps. I guess even if she did. So I'd say, listen, Robert, these two other two agents coming over. I want you to be looking for a couple of things when they come by, okay? Number one, I want you to look to see if they have a written plan to sell your home or are they just talking about marketing and social media? If there's no written plan, you'll know to hire me immediately. Also, number two, if they walk in and do not show you a copy of their daily schedule, you'll know that one doesn't exist and that you should be hiring me immediately. Will you keep an eye out for those two things, Robert? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, any questions before I let you go? No, that's good. Have fun with those guys. I love it. Set a trap. I want you looking for, do they talk about comparables? Or are they just talking about that they can get you this price? You know, and, and ask them. And so I set a couple of traps. So they walk in and Robert's like, so uh, Mike Ferry, uh, do you have a, can I, what kind of schedule do you follow? And the guy's like, huh? schedule? <laughs> right. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Or anything else that you can think of like that. Okay, guys and gals. All right, good. Any other questions? I'm hungry. You guys hungry? I haven't had lunch yet. Yeah. Hey, Ron, Miguel here. I really like, uh, you know, what you and I have been going over for the last month is we, we get the, the, look, the mini objection that, that you know, they, they have a statement. We have to keep the conversation moving forward. And I think a lot of us have trouble keeping a conversation moving forward. We get stuck. So then we can't go to the next part of the script. Yeah. And so... It's due to not being able to, you can't, you're not, you, it's hard for people to ask questions of others many times. And right. the way to keep a conversation going is just get into them and ask them more about what they're doing or what's going on. Right. But that's hard to do for a lot of folks, ask questions of other people. Yeah, very true. Did anybody do you raise your hand if you like talk to people next to you on the airplane? About 60%. 40% we don't talk. <laughs> We're afraid. We don't know how to strike up a conversation. We don't know how to be interested. I asked Mike Ferry years ago, Miguel, I go, Mike, how do I get better at asking questions? He goes, well, look at it this way. You're generally not interested in other people. So yes. it's hard to ask questions because you're not interested in others. So if I, once I began interested in a, being interested in other people, allowing myself to do that, the questions just come naturally. Oh, oh. Right, Lena? You just look at someone, yeah. you're like, well, I wonder, I wonder where she's from. She has an exotic look. I wonder where she's from and start asking about it. And then all of a sudden it's just natural. Where are you from? What do you do? What do you like? What are you into? What, you know, what are your plans? What are your goals? What's your past? There's so much to talk to people about and they're they and, and watch we all love it when people ask us questions about us and what we want and what we like and what we're doing you guys all enjoy it when other people ask you about you it just doesn't happen very often hey ron i have a question sure last one i know you're hungry <laughs> i want to get your feedback on when you're doing the presentation and you're doing the car analogy yeah. building and value proposition how do you make it in such a way that you're presenting that in a very comfortable, easy way? I know we're trying to compare it, but sometimes you would say, so what, there's a difference here. What's the difference about a car? I mean, a car is a car. This is my house, you know? I mean, sure. it's more value. So 
How well, we know? use we use the car example because most people have ha- have bought and sold several cars, but have may not done that many house transactions. So it's something that a lot of people can relate to. But how can I make that part stronger? One thing mm-hmm. I've done, Tess, is I was taught by my coach is that when I take a look at the house when I get there, can I do you mind if I take a look at your home? I stick my head in the garage. I also pay attention to what's in the driveway. Hey, Tess, when I did my tour, I noticed you have a nice BMW 740 in the garage. Good for you. Hey, what's a 740 cost these days? About 150000 I'd be like, hey, did you shop around when you bought that car, Tess? Yes. Hey, what if one dealership had it for 150, but you can get the stripped down model for 90000 Which one would you, which one's better value? I'll go with the 90. And see, so I would, I can use the car you bought as the example, because you shopped around when you bought it. One time I was struggling with that and I was sitting at the seller's dining table and on the wall was his big screen TV. And at the time, the biggest one you could buy was like 50 inches or something, right? But that was the big one at the time. And I go, wow, that what's something like that cost? He's like about $2,000. And I was like, did you shop around? I just did a TV analogy. What if one store had the TV on sale for this, which is a better value? See, so I'm just trying to do that. Now, in the beginning, before I start into the car analogy, you might just put a little leader into it and say, you know, I'd say, Tess, um, listen, I just want to do this little example just to kind of help you understand how buyers comparison shop. So for instance, when was the last time you guys bought a car? Well, what if one dealership and the other dealership, and I can just kind of segue into it? I see. Right. I think that's what, when you take Mike Ferry's scripts, those are some of the things that you have to add to the script are the connectors and the conversation uh-huh. without changing the questions themselves, but you can add the connectors. All right. Robert's getting nervous. He's biting his nails. He's like, I got to be done by one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, you can go as long as you no, want I'm, to go. I'm, I think I'm just biting my nails. Up. Cause I'm just already thinking about, getting this stuff into a role play repertoire okay. type of All right, stuff. Well, so listen, I've got to say this because Mike gets mad at me. What the, when it comes to these questions, I just jotted this stuff down. These are not official questions. These are not MFO material. This is just something that you recorded off a conversation with Ron. Okay, everybody don't get me in trouble. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but, but I would, Robert, I would, you know, give them these or examples of these kind of questions that we got off of this recording uh, uh, because yeah. I think it helps. I, I have, I, you had uh, sent this to me uh, before of some of these questions, the pit bull versus the poodle. And, oh yeah. There you go. And, well, you know uh, what? I stopped like saying that one because I have a, a, a standard poodle now and she is the, has the deepest gnarliest bark you've ever heard so and i have to change my whole example now you know <laughs> oh, i love it I they love are not it. they are not uh they are not weak dogs at all no <laughs> so, no 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 hey it I was great it. seeing everybody i hope you enjoyed your time with me thank you for your attention thank you for not multitasking and turn on your video and all that good stuff um you know just so you guys know and i'm sure that the, the company lets you know about it we have come back to start doing some of our smaller workshops again we haven't done them for a couple of years. And some of you veterans have been to all of them. We're bringing back productivity school, the productivity school. It used to be four days. It's now three. There's one in Vegas. Tony's teaching it in October. Um, I'm teaching one in Florida in November, but we'll, you'll start seeing them on the calendar next year. Okay. It's where you spend three days working on the scripts, the skills, the objection handlers, the dialogues. Only skill training. We're on our feet, pumping music, having fun, chanting, role playing. It's a good time. So get yourself to one of the smaller events now that they're back. Beautiful. By, by the way, I, I'm yeah. also, wait, last thing. My last pitch is I'm hosting our two day toy drive in uh, Anaheim this year in December, the toy drive. Yeah. Um, I don't think we bring a toy anymore. I think we bring money, <laughs> but they call it a toy drive still, but we bring money to donate for Toys for Tots. Two days events, just bring your donation. The event is free and I welcome everybody to come. We're going to have a great time. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. What are cool, the cool. dates for that again, Ron? I'm sorry. Would you please look it up on mikeferry.com sure. on the under events? I don't know. We'll Doesn't do. matter. Just be there. 
I'll be there. I just don't know when. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Everybody, everybody unmute yourselves. Gives this man the respect that he deserves. Thanks, Ron, everybody. Ron. Ron. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I love it. I Talk love it. Talk to you it. later. Bye-bye. All right. Before everybody Bye. goes, before everybody goes, he talked about skills. He talked about practice. Alma has posted in the chat box the link. We do a role play on this Zoom. This one that you're currently on. So the same way you got here today. You can get here tomorrow. And Alma's going to play this short video message from Neil Schwartz regarding our role play group. So Alma, take it away. Your role play partner, a flake. You schedule a role play session with your partner first thing in the morning and they don't even show up. Frustrating, right? This never happens at our role play workshop. We've developed a proven system You're that ensures you won't camera. ever have to deal with a flaky partner ever again. Oh. There will be a role play partner available for you every weekday, ready to work Is with you on you? sharpening your skills. Now you can be more effective when you talk with past clients, expired listings, for sale by owners, the way you handle objections and way more, way more. There's not a more reliable and effective way to practice your scripts and dialogues. Our program is free for real estate agents, and it's held Monday through Friday from 8 to 8.30 in our Zoom channel on our virtual real estate office. Click the button below, sign up, I'll see you inside. There you go. So Alma posted the link to that in the chat box. Thank you, Alma. You're the best. So Monday through Friday, 8 to 9, 8 to 8.30, we do agent-to-agent -agent role play. We share a, a script uh, that day, and then we put you in breakout rooms, 8.30 to 9. We do rapid-fire role play. It's great stuff. It's free. You always have a role play partner, so I would encourage everyone to show up, but only if you want to get better, okay? Yeah. If you don't want to get better, it's probably not for you, all right? So, so just... A quick question, if that's okay. Yes. I was going to join on that, and it says it's only for Southern California, and I'm in. No, Arizona. it's for for everybody. For everybody, we have we have agents from Canada, we have agents from Illinois, we have agents from Washington. So ignore the Southern California thing. It's for everyone and all over the place. The only thing is that it is specific standard time. So okay. if you're on the East Coast or something like that, you know, 8 a.m. our time would be 11 o'clock your time, or whatever the case may be. But it's it's for everybody. We have a very diverse group. Okay. All right. That's eight to eight thirty, and then after that, eight to eight thirty is agent to agent role play. We share a script. We share a script in the chat box, and then we'll put you in a breakout room with one or two other agents to role play that script. And then from eight thirty to nine, we do a rapid fire. What that is is that we will do. We'll put you in a larger breakout room with seven or eight other agents, and one of our team members will be sharing their screen with a bunch of different scripts and they just, we just call on people to read the scripts. Okay. That's great. Cause we're the same time now later. It'll be an hour before, but California, Arizona, it's great right now. Well, there you go. Perfect. The stars have aligned with California, right. Arizona.